What's happening? Long time. Here he is. Chief. What's you that good man? Oh, good, my man. Oh, good. You all right? Ah, hi. You're looking oh, well, mate. Having technical issues there, lad. <laughs> and what are you thinking? Is he going to invite me to this or what? <laughs> yeah, when it comes up, did it come up on your screen that time? The view thing? Yeah, it popped up, but I was just, I was watching you before. And it just, <laughs> it up, lad. That's why I was laughing. I was like, he's definitely at home just sitting there thinking, what's going oh. on? Why is Marvin not adding me? What's that? No. Oh, oh, what a guy, mate. What a guy. You're okay, though, yeah? <laughs> yeah, good, mate. Just back in Dublin up a minute, so. Oh, oh this man. Right. Going on, but it's not like a deal, is there? Everyone just no. needs to dig in at a minute, isn't it? No, exactly, mate. Right, we're going to go over your football career, mate. What a, what a long. I was looking at the clubs you played for, man. I was like, flipping hell. <laughs> Yeah, put it in, mate. That was a bit of a liberty as well. That ass not in there earlier. Really. <laughs> <laughs> like when I had highlights in a month. <laughs> mate, you know I supported Arsenal, so that had to go up for sure, man. Oh, it was all right. Well, we're here. One game, I played six minutes, I think. Yeah, you came on, didn't you? <laughs> can still tell the kids, though. Listen, I played for Arsenal. Yeah, exactly. I'm the Arsenal winger, man. Yeah, it no sounds, same thing. Never it, sound away from you. it sounds good anyway. It sounds yeah, good. no, exactly. <laughs> now I was looking, so you started what? Shelbourne youth team, is that? Shelbourne, yeah, Terry Orchard, really, mate. I yeah. Was Terry Orchard back here. And quite a few boys that like, came through Terry Orchard. Tommy Hayes was there as well. And, like, a lot of good players going through the ranks there. I think that yes. John, John Daly, he was at Rangers. But like, so many players from there started with the likes of Terry Orchard. And I went to Shelbourne for a year. They had yeah. a thing with the Man United Academy. Okay. So they done that joint thing where twice a week they'd have a United coach over and they train the boys and that. So I went there for my last season, but that was it, mate. Yeah, that was. Yeah. And then from there to Arsenal, do you think? Yeah, yeah. I went straight to Arsenal. Originally, I was going to go to United, so that was the reason why I went to Shelburne because they'd sort of been like speaking to me and to my family and all that about yeah may maybe going there. So that was sort of the plan. Yeah, I've just I had a change of mind last minute. Liam, yeah. Brady, Liam Brady was the head of the youth settled basically at, at Arsenal, and I thought I've got an Irish fella there. I thought he'd try and push me on, and that yeah, no, probably, it probably helps that they gave me a good contract. It was more money than you know. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a couple of things that influenced us, so yeah, just ended up going there, and that, that was it. What a fifteen side yeah, 14, actually. I was like, it was two weeks, I think, before my 15th birthday, so. So, is, is that just you that went across, then? Um, just me, yeah. No, 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 my family and that came, my parents came. Yeah. For a couple of years, until I was, until I went to Falkirk, really, I know. When I was, yeah. when I was, I was playing in the resis and that, to be fair, I, I started off well at Arsenal, but when you look at the, the quality of players, I never had a sniff. You had Van yeah. Persie, Bearcamp, Henri, um, Reyes. Even uh, Jeremy Allardier was there. Was he the same year as you? <laughs> he, he was. He was seen as like a reserve player. I mean, he could have went to play anywhere before he got his injuries in the Brent. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, the quality there was just a joke. Even the likes of Jermaine Pennant and that playing in the Resi. Yeah, David, David Bentley. Like, yeah. That was your that was your Resi team, and you're thinking, yeah, like how am I gonna? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, who are you playing up front with back then? In that, in that. You too. That was um, mainly Nicholas Pentner. He he lived with me for a while. I lived with him and Johan uh, Giroud. Yeah. Big, big centre half, Swiss boy. So, yeah, it was mainly me and, me and Bentner. Yeah. Was, like, he was the one. And to be fair, he went on and done very well there for a while. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. He got, he got a few games, didn't he? Yeah. You can, imagine the, two, you can imagine the two of us up front, two head cases. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more like you two in the house together, man. <laughs> Oh, the house, the house was quiet in London, but it was it was a good laugh. That bit that was mad, though. Really? He was... You think I'm bad? He was like that since we were 14. But he gets a lot he of was... for his playing style. Is he, is he better than what people, like... Pursue? Yeah, I think, I think for a big fella, he was quick, he was strong, he was, like, good with his feet as well, do you know what I mean? It's just 
all around he was good. Yeah. To be honest, listen, I'll be honest that I didn't know like play, but loads of players at that age it's hard to tell like where they're gonna end up, but I didn't yeah. see him like play, playing as many games for Arsenal and Juve and that, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, yeah, of course. <laughs> That's football, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the way it yeah. Who was a special player in that youth team then? That you, like you say, who would you have thought at that time, right, they're going to be? Fabregas. Fabregas was the one, mate. He came in at like 16 into the res. He's played a couple. Actually, the first game we played with us, we played Crawley in yeah. the youth cup. I think we beat them 6 or 7 nil. But he just came straight in. Obviously, he trained a couple of days and was like thrown, thrown in for this game. And mate, we didn't really know. No one really like it. Heard much. Just as oh, this Spanish boy coming. He's meant to be the new wonder kid. Not. Yeah. Mate, it was a joke that night. Really. <laughs> it was an absolute joke. And then there was three or four of us. There was me, Fabrice Muamba, Bentner, um, Kerry Gilbert as well. You know Kerry, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right back. Yeah, there was like four or five of us that used to train with the forest team every day. Yeah, but we we might train like maybe three or four days a week, you know what I mean, or three days a week with them. My yeah, Fabric was going straight in. Obviously, trying to see something with him, but he was just straight in. He, just... he, he, he was playing that long later. Yeah, yeah, of course they started. Yeah. It's one of them though. You know when you see someone at the start and you don't like. I saw him in the game and I thought, yeah, he's a good player and all, but he almost went up another level when he was playing for the first team. He was obviously everyone knows him and what he's like, but he was unbelievable. So. So what's, what was the nerve like? You, obviously, being a young boy, going from Ireland into the Arsenal youth team and then suddenly you're training with the Arsenal first team. Is it, What's that like? It's hard, of course it is. It was hard for me just to train with the normal boys. I wasn't yeah. I wasn't used to training every day even. Yeah. And we were, you're going across. Now, 15, you're, you're doing double sessions and that. You're thinking, what's going on here? Yeah. But the hardest thing for me was leaving school, leaving my mates and just your normal life at home. I found that so hard to adapt to. I'd be on yeah, the phone yeah. for six or seven hours a day to people at home. and I, th I think after about a year, I went in to see Liam Brady. Yeah. And I said it to him, I said, look, I just want to go home. Yeah. But he, he was good with me. He knew how to handle it. And he'd, he'd obviously had plenty of experience because even at the time when I went, there was the likes of Patrick Craig, Stephen O'Donnell, Stephen Bradley. Like Graham Barrett was there as well. Like they were, they'd all come over before me. So I'm sure he experienced it with them, but he was brilliant for me. He, I think he gave me a week off or two weeks off and went, look, go home and see how you feel and that and come back. So and come back. Yeah. So then the, then the full cut loan come about. Was that push from you or was that from Arsenal or how'd that come about? Well, that's all. I was playing in the resis and I knew I wasn't going to go into the forest team and I wasn't really developed. Like there was nothing really more I could do in the reserves. So I was playing. Playing there for about a year and a half. Yeah. And I was getting to the stage where I sort of needed first team football and I thought I was good enough for it. Not, not yeah. obviously, not at that level, not at playing in the Prem or something, but yeah, I don't know how it came about at the time. I think Stephen, uh, Patrick Craig and Stephen O'Donnell had gone from Arsenal to Falkirk and they must have spoke to the gaffer then and said, listen, I think he could do a job here. So that's really how it came about, you know what I mean? I think Yogi... Yeah. Yogi came and watched me a couple of times then and just, that was how it came about. Did you have to think twice about going? Obviously, being at Arsenal, no. you're a huge club. Not really, though. At that age, I was only 16, 17. So, yeah. just thinking, oh, it's 14 football. Obviously, I'm looking, I'm just looking at Celtic and Rangers, really, and it, yeah. in the Scottish Prem, and I'm thinking, yeah, listen, it'd be nice to play against them, play 14 football. And, that's not always exciting, you know what I mean? You're leaving house, you're moving in on your own. You just, I just thought, no, I'll give it a go, yeah? Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go. And obviously, you went there with an absolute fire. Yeah. No, I've done well at Falkirk. I couldn't miss it at that. We, yeah, to be fair, though, man, it's, you know yourself, if you're doing well in the team, a lot of the time it's the players around you. Not, yeah. I forget how good that, that Falkirk team was. Yeah. I had boys like Alan Gale that was like on his prime with Stephen O'Donnell. Patrick Craig, the two of them had just left Arsenal like they obviously so much ability. Yeah. And then I had little, little Tappy, a little wizard in midfield. I used to just make runs. He was one of them that used to put back backspin on the ball for you. The ball would just stop in front of you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> just make the running your fight. Yeah, with a with a really, really good good team there. And obviously I went in and just sort of like got on with the lads, good bunch of boys as well, where yeah. there's no egos or anything like that. It was just everyone Everyone's just getting on with it. 
But even like you said, I know you're just giving respect to the players, but to score the amount of goals, what was your, your record there was what, 14 goals in 16 appearances? I don't know, I can't remember. Someone must have edited your wiki. <laughs> I'm normally good at my stats as well. But 14 and 16, that's that's phenomenal, huh? Like yeah. I was only there maybe three months or something. Yeah, because you ended yeah. up leaving the January, didn't you? Yeah, I left in the January window. Again, even when I left I was that was a last minute one as well. You know, That's... I changed my mind there as well, but it sort of ended up working out all right in the end. So what, did you want to stay at full cut for the duration? Oh, no, no, I wanted to leave, but at the time, Charlton were in the Prem. Yeah. And it was Charlton, Celtic and uh, Sunderland. Ended yeah. Up getting, I was 2 million or 2.2 million, something like that. Except, yeah. but I think Sunderland... Or Celtic maybe, Celtic maybe got a four. I don't know what way it worked out, but I went to yeah. see Celtic first because that was the only place I wanted to go. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I went in and I d- done really well, obviously, at Falkirk. I scored more, I think it was, who was it up front? Uh, Hesselink and maybe Boyd. Yeah. I don't know if it was up front for, or McDonald was, I don't know, I can't remember at the time who was up front at Celtic. Yeah. And uh, Strachan goes, well, you're going to be number three. And you know what I'm like, yeah, I, was yeah. even, I was probably even a little bit worse when I'm younger and I just kind of said it to him, I was like, but I've scored more than the two of them put together, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> he, number he, one. He, he started the saying to me, going, oh, well, you know, it's, it's uh, you'll be number three, you'll get a chance coming off the bench and all that. And that just didn't sit well with me because I thought, I've looked at other players, I'd seen like the likes of Deke, a top player, go from Hibs, absolutely yeah. boxing with Hibs and not really getting the chance. Yeah, and sort of killed them, and I'll be honest, that sort of put me off a bit going to Celtic. Yeah, and it's still obviously you're such a young boy then, so don't you? Want yeah, to yeah. and that 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 was my team. Everyone knows I love Celtic a bit. Yeah, so that's the team I'd ever wanted. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, that gave me like the fear of it, and I and I knew the sort of the character that Strachan was because I I'd heard it from other boys with Aiden and that McGee. Yeah, you know, if you if you don't like totally the line with him, he can just like put you out of the picture completely. And, that was that was probably the main reason I didn't end up going to Celtic, yeah. Yeah, and then obviously down to Sunderland with yeah. Roy Went to Sunderland instead, mate. Went with Keane, and he was a big factor in that. And I, this, my start in the Sunderland career went well. Obviously, yeah. I I don't know how we turned around, but we were bottom of the league maybe in January. I've signed like sort of the end of January when they were after winning a couple of games, and we went on to win the championship. So yeah, he turned it around massively, didn't he? Yeah, massively. We ended up winning on the last day. Yeah. So I think we won maybe one on goal difference. Me and Morf scored a couple on the last day. We won 5-0. I remember when we got to 3 or 4. Yeah. We were saying, oh, that'll be us if we don't concede. We'll have won it. But I can't remember exactly. But it was the last day, yeah. So So what was he like as a manager? What was Keane like? So I see him as a player. Keane was good. I, he actually he reminded me a bit of my dad. Like, just straight talk. And he was like, there was no... Listen, no fucking about them, you know. What I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just the way it was, you know. It was his way or no way, but I always respected him, and he was always, he always sort of knew where you stood with him. If you had an issue, he'd pull you in and just tell you exactly what it was. And yeah. Was, like, he, even for instance, I seen a, someone was talking to him a couple of weeks ago. When I first arrived, I'd missed the bus, haven't I? I've arrived down in Sunderland and moved into a nice big house down there. But they've set the meeting for some. Some like what was it? It was like a I don't know service station in the middle of yeah. nowhere, mate. right? I'm trying to get this on my sat nav driving along. I've no idea where I'm going. I've got like a rough idea from like a turn off to turn off, with about six miles in between off one of the boys. Yeah, and then there's a car crash. So there's like five of us late, and I've like I'm doing 120 in the hard shell trying, <laughs> trying to catch the bus. The rest of them all have set in the traffic. I've got listen, if the police come. I'll take my chances with it. Yeah, yeah. I'll I mean, it was either like, and I've missed it by about a minute. I mean, genuinely a minute. Yeah. I've like pulled up, and the bus door is like just sort of closed, and you can see the boy still standing up on it and that. Yeah. And uh, he's just told the bu- he's just told the bus driver to drive. No way. Yeah. So I'd, 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 I I thought, what what do I do here? Surely he's gonna cave and let me on. I'm only everyone else has missed it completely. Yeah. But I've arrived at the pulling out, so I'm like. So I followed the bus and all that, and I'm ringing the boys. And uh, I rang Liam Miller, and I was like, Miller, get down on that, because 
Miller's obviously had a connection with him from Cork yeah. and all that. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to say, mate, you know, Miller didn't want to do it. <laughs> I'm like, fuck off, you know. <laughs> I'm like, mate, get down and tell him. I said, behind the bus. I said, just tell him to pull in at the next service and I'll stop. So uh, he's gone down to him and I've just heard him say, nah, fuck off, tell him to go home. I was like, all right, mate. And Miller's pissing himself all the time. So, like, giving me help. And so it was one of them. I just, I actually went about 30 miles behind it, I think, though. Really? Yeah. Constantly following it, but you're still uh, having it. Well, no, that was it, but it sort of went downhill after that, mate. That was like, that was within the first two weeks, and then the season finished well and went up to the brand, play, played quite a bit the first year, and then after that, I sort of fell out. Was what, what was it like, obviously, like making your debut in the Premier League? Like you said, you're a boy from Ireland. You know, yeah, you come I think to that, was a, that, that was a big thing, especially because it was like the next season we'd won the champ and then they'd signed like. Sound like the likes of Michael Chopper and that. Chops came in for maybe, I don't, I don't, it was big money at the time, mate. Especially yeah. Sunderland, maybe six or seven million, I can't remember. Yeah. But me and Morf had done well in pre season. And I think it was a bit because we'd done well the season before. And, you know, even the last game of the season, I think she's scoring those two goals to win the league. He stuck, yeah. with, us, he stuck with us, um, Keane, to be fair, and he started us in the first game. But uh, it was nil all and Chops has come on and scored in the last two minutes. So you're under pressure. <laughs> so you've won the game, but you're under pressure straight away. New strikers in, so he's bagged at his debut. But uh, no, nah, listen, playing in, playing in the Prem was... I actually thought it was easier. In certain games, it was easier. In terms of what the defending? Yeah, yeah, no, like, you know, in the championship, the championship's, like, aggressive. Yeah. Like, in some games, it, like... Um, it's even again against the likes of Liverpool and that. Like sometimes they'll just sit off and let you have the ball. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And they'll press it the right times, but you've more time than you think. I think in the championship, it's like, mate, bang on you. You know where yeah. you know where everything's going to be like a fight. Yeah. Like certain games there, it's more football and that. And I enjoyed it, but the level's just different. It's just a different level. The big give away, give away the ball, you're going to get punished though, in the Premier League. Yeah. I imagine. Yeah, well, the quality's obviously up there as well, but even physically. Yeah. Right. The size of some of them like that, these are absolute man mountains, but they, do you know what I mean? They're like 100 metre sprinters and yeah. absolute units, you know, yourself, man. It's hard enough for me in Scotland, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you played with what? Dwight York, Andy Cole, Stern John. Was that Stern the championship season at Sunderland? You had those. What? Is that the championship season? You already know all the black boys that were at Sunderland. Yeah. <laughs> Them, Dwight, York, Andy yeah, Cole. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that big at the back as well. You must have yeah. those, you know? <laughs> oh, we'd, yeah, we'd some units in that team, by the, by the yeah. way. Was that, is that yeah. the cha- in the Championship or Premier League that they were there? Uh, both. Yeah. Both. Yeah. So you, you were still wearing the number nine. You had Dwight York and Andy Cole in the squad. Yeah, I got bullied for that. I got, yeah, that, got, that got taken off me soon enough, though. I got that when I first went in. I had that for a year and a half, and then I dropped it at me. I think he was making this point with me, like the the third season I was there. Yeah, and that's when I ended up going on loan and that. But so, what was it like to have those boys around you? Though, like, what was obviously the one yeah. Andy Cole, like, mate, that quality was unbelievable. You know what I mean? They, listen, Cole was probably a little bit by you know what I mean. But yeah. York, Yorkie was physically. I've never seen anyone in that shape in my life. Really, you know, I'm someone at his age. Like, yeah, he was brilliant for us. He saw the, you know, I mean, he was playing in midfield and that, and he just bossed it. Yeah, it, it was even like Keane. Keane had joined in sometimes, and I used to have Keane down thinking, hey, just you know, absolute graft, steady yeah. on the ball, and that. mate, he'd be zinging balls and like playing one twos around you, and that, and you're thinking, if that's the standard of like a defensive midfielder. At that yeah, level. he's what retired. Was like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. They were, they were just a just a level above, and you could see that quality even at the right. So, but did that rub up on you though? Training obviously with players like that, surely that that improves your game. <laughs> Mad, you know what I'm like in training. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, see, see, to be honest, see with Keane, it was almost too frantic to train. Yeah, the boys were trying to put it in so much. Going right, he loves this. This is what he's into, and that. That yeah. sometimes they would just get scrappy. You know, yeah. we have like little seven or so games, and you, 
it just it almost needs to be like a game where you're keeping a bit of possession of that. Mate, yeah, yeah. Just steaming in, tackling. He'd let everything go. There's never a free kick. Oh, he's just in, like Lennon used to. Oh, mate, Paul McShane used to have a field day. He just beat <laughs> people up and down the park. Just play on. Yeah, play on. <laughs> mate, there'll be fights going on on the sideline and there'll be play on. <laughs> I me- remember him. I remember Paul McShane and Big Dicks in the two who I genuinely, uh, Mac has chinned them on the side of it. And then he's, he's chasing after Macker on the side of the pitch, and Keane said, like, "Just play your foot." We saw that afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, man, that's not a word of a lie. Oh man, so you have to you have to have your wits about you then. Oh, Dixon, Dixon picked up. Do you know Big Dixon? Yeah, yeah, he's a press player. Right, he's picked the wrong boy. They have, they've gone in for a fifty-fifty. And this is, I think this has been spoken about, so it's not fun. I'm not like just throwing it out there. Yeah. I'm thinking Maka, Maka is not the type of boy that you'd like. Maka's a strong, hard boy, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Dixon's a big lad as well and tried to throw it, but mate, he's, they've, they've gone in for a 50 50 and there's a bit of a niggle. And then t- literally, just the way it happened about 20 seconds later, there's a throw in. And what does Dixon d- decide to do? Decides to just bounce it straight off his forehead. <laughs> Johnny about a yard away. Yeah, I promise you, the ball hadn't even hit Macca's head and he chinned him. <laughs> <laughs> Keane's just gone like that, play on, lads, play on. <laughs> They're scrubbing on the side of the pitch. <laughs> oh, Flipping man. hell, man. It was a zoom. So, so after Sunderland, obviously that was your first, that's the first time at Hibs, wasn't it? That's when you, 500,000. Yeah, you know? yeah, came back to Hibs and uh, Yogi was in charge again, so that was an easy move for me, you know what I mean? Yeah, so obviously you had him at full cup, and then was that you, you? Were you thinking I want to stay in England after the Sunderland move, or did you think? I, I wasn't really thinking anything, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I probably would have went anywhere, but I thought I didn't really enjoy the last year at Sunderland. I was still like fairly young, and I yeah. just it was just an easy decision. Yogi rang me up, and I thought I've just been paid up off Sunderland for yeah. a year, a year and a half, so the money wasn't massively important. And I yeah. thought I'll go enjoy my football. And being yeah. perfectly honest, in my head, I thought I'd love another opportunity to go to Celtic. Yeah. And that's the thing to my dad when I signed. I was like, look, this is a two year deal. I can get out after one year. Yeah. Ideally, I'll, I'll go there. Yeah. Um, so obviously, you went yeah. to Hibs and had a. Like, can you hear me? Can you hear me, dad? I can see you. Your know, Wi-Fi was gone there, Chief. No, no, I can see you clearly. <laughs> I, I need to update it. Yeah. What were you no, saying? I, was, I was saying you went to Hibs and uh, had an unreal season. Obviously, you only one season, five hundred thousand they paid for you, and then you, you had one season there. What was that like getting back in the Scottish? Uh, back in Scotland? Yeah, it was it was brilliant. I really really enjoyed that year. That was um, yeah, probably one of the happiest times of my career. To be honest, with you being there and. We did a great team. Yogi was brilliant. See, see having a manager like that. I, certain players, you know, will play with a manager that like pushes them and that way. Or, but Yogi just got the best out of me because I trusted him and I felt like he had that. See, if I had a bad game, I never felt under pressure. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And I always felt like it was just easy to play under him. And, you know. Yeah. I think, that, you know yourself, Marby, if, if the gaffer's confident in you in your league, you don't feel under pressure at the place and you're at ease, mate. Your football just flows. And yeah. I, I always found that under him. I always did. Yeah. So, obviously, at the end of that season, I think you hit, you hit over 20 goals in that season as well. At Hibs. I think I think I hit 23 that year, yeah. Yeah. And then, obviously, the Celtic, Celtic move. Yeah. Out. When did you find out about that? Was that, did you know before the end of the season or did you find out in the summer? Um, I could tell you how it actually came about, but I was, I was away with the Irish team. Um, yeah, Lenny obviously was in charge and that, and through a couple of us, through it was sort of through Morph as well. They were trying to get Morph obviously at the time, and um, I just ended up having a chat with him, mate, and that was it. He sort of said, "Look, I'm interested in you. If I can get you, I'm gonna try and get you." And I said to him, "Listen, I said I'll jump at the chance. I said I missed it once. I said I'm not gonna miss it again." So yeah, um, it was just a case of getting that deal done. I wasn't really bothered about the money anything at the start. I just yeah. Once I had a second chance of going back, I was going back. Were Hibs okay with obviously, well, not okay, obviously losing their star player, but with, well, they didn't stand in your way, I take it. They just. Well, not really. They've obviously got a few quid in that, too. You know? I mean, they recouped the money that they, they put out at first and they made a few quid, so I think everybody was sort of happy. Yeah. 
it worked for everyone. And obviously, we had a good, we had a good season that year as well. We could, I think we ended up finishing maybe fourth, was it? Uh, yeah, that was, it was it was good for everyone. Was, you know, everyone was happy. Happy out of that. Yeah, that team. you know what I mean. Yeah, and then obviously Celtic, you got your dream move. Yeah, what was that, that, what was that feeling. That was the one. That was probably the best feeling in the world for me. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I think the only thing that comes close to it was probably when when I signed the extension. Yeah. Because I thought I thought that was a real I don't know, for me it was something special because, you know, I'd done three years or four years initially and to get another three year deal I was I was just delighted with it. Yeah. The whole That's... experience Celtic listen, Celtic's always been my team, it's still my team now and um yeah, that was probably the happiest I've been in, in my football career, to be honest with you. Yeah, and obviously during that time you struck up a unbelievable partnership with Gary Hooper. Yeah, that that was a funny one. That was just one of them that he came into training and it was sort of after 10, 20 minutes we were training. and he, I don't know, he just kept that understanding. That wasn't practice. That wasn't, you know, I think the gaffer tried to build on it after he seen us play three or four times together and we started scoring goals. But yeah, that was just something natural. I, there'd be times on the pitch I'd just put the ball into space and you know who would be there. And, yeah. if he gave, and if he gave it to him in the right area, he was finishing. It was a joke. Yeah. But, so that yeah. just came, that there was nothing, because obviously, I, I was watching you boys obviously rip it up, so it, from the outside, it looks like, wow, these two must be doing endless work together, but then you're saying it was just a, a <laughs> natural thing. We didn't really have to, mate. The only thing yeah. we ever came up with was just giving little shouts for like a little flick around the corner or, or a direct over, where he just literally over and go for the one-two, you know what I mean? But beyond yeah. that, it was just, I think he sort of knew, if I get into certain positions, sometimes I'd put it into space or... Um, I'd always look for a little true, but just like it was just his movement dictated what I done. Yeah, you know what I mean. I always played that little bit deeper, and it just sort of clicked. It was just one of them things. But I do think it helped that we socialised outside a football. Yeah. We spent a lot of time with each other. Like at the time, our missus would have been close and all that. Yeah, um, there was a gang of us, maybe five or six of us, seven, eight actually, maybe. I'd say yeah. we had a good core group out at like eleven. Yeah, most weekends we do something together. If it wasn't yeah. for girls, the boys would be out, or we'd have Halloween parties and that. And I think that makes a big difference. Yeah, you know what I mean. But with the team spirit, and, you know, yeah, it was good for us during that spell. So, so when you went to Celtic, obviously the first thing you're thinking is win the league, win the league, and you finished second, didn't you, the first year you were there too? Yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. we lost out, which was disappointing. I think it went to the last day. Yeah. Uh, Killy threw it in, didn't they? Against Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were never going to do us any favours that day. But yeah, it went yeah. to the last day. But it was disappointing. But they stayed a, they had a quality, quality team at that stage. They had some proper, proper players, Rangers. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think Lenny was just sort of rebuilding the team that year. And it was it was a difficult one for us to take, though, all the same. Going to the last day and losing out. So yeah. It made everything much sweeter for the remaining years I was there. Was yeah, no, exactly. So after obviously you say losing out on the last day, was it a feeling of wow we've thrown this away, or was it a feeling of right let's get have our summer off, come in pre-season and we'll we'll do it next year, or was it just an element of disappointment? Do it next year, hundred percent. Because yeah. we, we knew there was games, there was like in the run up to the end of that season, there was just points that we dropped at the stage that killed us, and you yeah. sort of, you sort of knew were coming, you know, like. You know when it's a tight run-up and there's maybe six, seven weeks left in the league and we drew a couple of games and I remember thinking, that's going to cost us. Yeah. And little things like that sort of sit in your head. They sort of filled their cup going into the next games. But there was pressure on both of the teams, to be fair. I, you have to just give it to Rangers. I think if anyone wins the league over a year, they're the yeah. best, team. They're the yeah, best yeah. Team. There's no two ways about it. And they they'd serious quality. And I think it sort of told that all the new players coming in that year and was trying to bind together and... We came back stronger next year, didn't we? Yeah, so then, like I said, the, you and Hooper were unbelievable the first season. Second season, same thing. Same yeah. partnership, obviously, going to win the league. What, what was that? Yeah. That was your first your first league win anywhere? Um, well, by the championship with Sunderland, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. top flight. Yeah, top flight. It was, yeah, listen, it was unbelievable to do it with Celtic as well. It was, it was just something special, you know. Yeah. With a, with a, with a great season and, yeah. I think that partnership with Hoops while I was there was that's probably the best I've played in my career. Yeah. 
you know, and the players we had around us, we'd serious quality in the team as well. That, and I, th- I think we, I, I, that's why I mentioned the, like, obviously the social aspect with each other as well, because there was a proper team bond there. It was an unbelievable dressing room. And, yeah. and even the gaffer, I think the boys dug in for the gaffer. They all respected him. And Lenny was brilliant at the time. So yeah. it was just all the boxes were really ticked, I think, when I was there. And I think that's why I'll always look back in it and think that was, you know, the best time of my career. So going back to Ireland, obviously, after winning the title with Celtic, it must have turned into an absolute hero, man. Yeah, but it's funny though in Ireland because, listen, they're all Celtic fans. It's not like Scotland where there's a divide. If anyone's yes. a fan there, they're a Celtic fan. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, going to Belfast and that, I think it was it was different, even yeah, in Dublin as well. But yeah, um, no, Celtic was brilliant for my career because then I started playing Champions League and I was getting opportunities with the Irish team and that as well. You know, so... Everything was everything just went on cue and like I said it whatever six years there or six or seven years there but um yeah probably the six, best six or seven years of my life. Yeah. So to play like you say Champions League, like again, like you picked so many boxes as a player, you played in the English Premier League, you won the English Championship, you've won, you know, the Scottish Premier League. But Champions League is you know, growing up as boys obviously we're, we're around the same age, you don't think oh, I'm playing Champions League one day, that's like yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think for me I think Playing in the Prem and doing a year or whatever, I think I played 20 or 30 games in the Prem. But the Champions League ones are special nights, you know. They are, they're, they're just unbelievable, especially at Celtic Park as well. I think it's yeah. great. Eh? I think if you were at another club, I probably wouldn't have felt the same. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, we we had some unbelievable results. Obviously, probably the biggest one is against Barcelona. But yeah, we I think we always held our own in Europe. You know, yeah. most Celtic teams have, but. Um, we got to the last 16 that year, but it was probably because I was injured for six months. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, done my, I'd done my ankle the pre-season against Inter Milan that year, so I yeah. was to the Barcelona game and that, but it was still great to watch the boys. and uh, Yeah, it was some unbelievable nights. Being around it. So, Hooper, did Hooper leave the following season? So, Hooper left 2012. Was it that season? You're putting me on the spot here, man. I'm... See, you're meant to be good at this. Normally, you're knowledgeable about that. When you're at him, when we do a quiz, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the answer. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm good at other people, but I'm thinking about it. I'm well, in my past, too, often, man. Yeah, so, no, who, who put left? And then, who was your strike partner then? Was it Sam Ras? Yeah, I was playing with Sammy quite a bit in Commons. And it, was, it was, see, when Hoops and that left, it was like, it was all sort of the same. But when it really changed was when Dela came in. Yeah. Dealer went one up front and Griff had come in. Griff had done really well at the end of the season. I played with him. And uh, then it was sort of downhill for me after that. You know? Yeah. Uh, we repositioned, didn't you? You started playing wide left. I started playing on the left, yeah. We were playing one up front and Griff was playing up front and it was maybe me on the left and Commons on the right and that. Yeah. And it, was, it was just very different the way we played with Lenny. Lenny was all out attack. The, yeah. the games if we went one nil down, then he'd rather you know yourself, he'd rather you yeah. two or three. Yeah. Whereas it was this whole new philosophy of like pressing a certain way, pressing up the pitch, but you know yourself you go and press and someone pops one ball in between us, mate. The whole shape's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I wasn't happy with how it was going. Oh really yeah. maybe it was because I was going from Lenny to this where I was like so happy there, Gaffer, I love to just a different approach that I didn't really think it'd work long term. I know all these European managers, and this was probably around the time of that sort of shift was coming in. That, yeah, a lot of different managers were, um, yeah, trying this pressing game. And I think, listen, if you've got the best players in the world, yeah, you've got half a yeah. I think it's, I think it's a difficult way to play, and certainly in the Scottish Premier League, I thought it was hard for us. So do you think he was like ahead of his time, or do you think it just wasn't it wasn't right for the players and for the league? Were in? Well, there, there must have been something because well, obviously in Europe with uh, Dele, it just didn't go well for us, mate. You know, yeah. we, we got put out in the early stages two years in a row, so there was obviously something lacking there. But the first season, I think you can forgive him because he's only come into the job and he only had a couple of weeks. Yeah. But, uh, nah, listen, it's a, see with Dele, it was a weird one for me because I liked him. Yeah, he personally as a fella, he yeah. was a, he was a good guy, like a genuinely good guy. 
but his philosophy and everything sort of went down the channels of getting crosses in and that. And I just, I, I just didn't feel like it really suited us. Yeah. And it wasn't really the way Celtic played, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, of course. I yeah. Was an expect and I think the fans had expectations of how Celtic played it. Yeah. You know, we're dominant in possession, we attack, attack, attack. Yeah. But with everything, was, it was all played on going wide, getting balls in the boxes. And yeah. I think Griff, Griff actually adapted better to it. Me, he starts scoring headers out of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, boy's like a salmon there when he turned the yeah. boxes in the box. But at the start, I think the two of us look, were looking at each other and go, Man, how are we going to score any goals here? Yeah, how's this going to work? So then obviously, Lennon ends up coming coming to hit. No, he put you on, Stubbs put you on, didn't he? Yeah, it was Stubbs on loan. Stubbs yeah. a... See, see, the reason I went on was I wasn't playing. I had a big fallout with him, and I wasn't leaving Scotland. Mate, to be perfectly honest with you, yeah, you know what I mean. Um, so that was really the reason. I sort of said to Celtic, Celtic were like, "No, you can go here. We can get X amount of your wages and all that." And I said, "I won't be gone." I said, I'll yeah. just, I said, "It's just till the end of the season." I said, and I sort of knew the writing was on the wall there that I was going to be be leaving then. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. I sort of held firm on it, and I thought, no, I'll go to Hibs. I just started, it's a long story, I just started seeing like, a new girl in Scotland. Yeah. I had a couple of things in the background that I thought, I want to be here. Yeah, you want to be in Scotland. I, I, I don't want to be anywhere else. I don't want to be down south or anything else. So yeah. that's um, that's that's the main reason I went to Hibs that time. So you rock, <laughs> rock up at Hibs? <laughs> yeah. Here comes Stokes, see? Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I always loved it, man. Genuinely. Yeah. Like, even the last time I was there, I would have loved to stay. Yeah. But it's just me being a bit my usual self, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and having sort of just not backing down off it. And that's yeah, really yeah. what it was, where I, I probably could have. But I get like that and I stand my ground on things. And sometimes yeah. it goes against me, but I don't really dwell on it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I wish the last time I hit, I had stayed a bit longer. I really yeah. So you like say you kind of, you came under Stubbs. Yeah. Did you did you feel within yourself that you were that you were fit at the start, or did you feel because like, obviously you haven't played a lot of Celtic, had you in your first? No, I, I think I needed to get back into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had a bit of weight on me and that, but I think I think my whole time there was all right. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And I um, yeah scored a couple of goals. I think the first few games always helps, and yeah, um, I felt all right. I, I felt my time there was all right. Yeah, for a striker, it's easier though. You know, maybe you know, like even with me, I might do something in games for eighty minutes, but I think if you score, you, yeah, yeah, you get away with it. You know, yeah, you score the winner. Or for a striker, it's slightly different to other players. Whereas, you know, I look at my stats at places. I really do. I look at my stats. Yeah. I don't look back and go, ah, oh, even the cup final, if I had I played really well there and that score, yeah. I wouldn't have looked back. And, oh, but I played really well and we lost the game. Yeah, yeah, I look yeah. Back at my stats and go. Even even that time under Stubbs, people were giving me a bit of stick. Yeah, I think I played twenty games and scored ten goals. And one and yeah. two. Do you know what I mean? As a striker, that's about where I want to be. I think if you're one and two, that's a very good ratio. To be fair, I gave you a bit of stick as well because a couple of games I was like, "Who's this imposter man? Who is this guy?" And then we yeah. fast forwarded to May. I was like, "Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. we some dark nights away. Yeah. Me. <laughs> Places you don't want to be playing my hair so Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, man. Well, Flipping out. Right, let's let's go to the cup final. What do you? Firstly, I want to know what the hell you have for breakfast. I think you just had, had a good night. You know, you know what it was about the cup final. Obviously, it was like, see playing Rangers was a big thing, and I knew the stature of the game. I knew if I play well today, yeah, like, you'd be remembered for it. And sometimes I sort of needed that something to like, yeah. But mate, everything that day was like. Everything about it. I, I didn't feel like we were confident going into that game. Like, see, the squad yeah, really, yeah. I wasn't really, I wasn't really getting that, but I was getting like a nervous vibe. Yeah. And then I think, see, waking up that day, mate, everything. See, the weather that morning, I yeah. thought, mate, I'm on this. I woke up. <laughs> I remember just looking out the window at that hotel. Where, what was that hotel we were at? Uh, what was it called? Wherever it was. Yeah. I remember just looking out and I thought, Blue skies, unbelievable out of my family. This is a bit of me today. I thought I could do it. <laughs> I'm getting, I was getting the suit and that on, and I was looking, had a fresh trim. I thought, you're ready for this today. Yeah, you're ready for, you're ready for it. So, so, what, so what are your thoughts? Travelling, obviously, from the hotel. I can't remember what the hotel was called. Cool. Travelling from the hotel, obviously, to the stadium. 
Is anything different? Your routine different? What What are your thoughts going down? Obviously, you know you're I, I was, I was, I was just bang on it with everything, mate. Everything. I was. I felt relaxed. I was just. I, I did. Maybe I was nervous, and I was like getting that vibe off myself in the week up to it. Yeah. Because I was like so built up for that game. I thought I was looking at our team, and I was thinking, mate, we can beat these. We have yeah. the team to beat these, but they're a good team. Yeah. And even the way, even the way they played under that Warburton and that, I see the football and that, I thought, they're dangerous because the way they play, because that, that was the type of team that could do you three or four. See yeah, they, like, got into, a, got into a nice rhythm early on in the game and maybe scored early, I thought, we could be in trouble, but if we could just like hold our nerve and play our game, because yeah. we had to play sort of a counter-attack in that day. To yeah, yeah. Because you knew they were going to play out from the back, and, and I thought, the first goal is going to be crucial. I really did think that, because... Especially with like our fans and all, I thought. Um, I thought if, they, if we can see the early doors, I thought our backs are going to be against the wall. Yeah, yeah they start really. talking it about the nick another one, and then you're struggling. But, yeah, no, it's just it, it went pretty much perfect, didn't it? See scoring like that in the first two minutes, I think that settled all of us. Yeah. So what? 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 Are you, what? Are you, what are your thoughts? Walking out on the pitch, obviously uh, seeing. I just see thought I I get, I get mad things in my head. I was like, think this is made for me. Like, the pitch yeah. the perfect, the weather. The, there wasn't a breeze in the air. It was just everything. You just get that vibe some days where you're like... Even the pitch was, like, glossy that day. It was, yeah. Like, zippy. Yeah. I thought, this is made... You, you've no excuses when it's like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, talk, talk us for your first goal. Um, yeah, I think Cummins obviously rolls it to me. And... You know what I'm like. To be fair, Stubbsy had sort of said it. Like even with that, with Tad, I just always drifted out to the left. Yeah. You know that's just how I played. But as soon as I got it, the and I think he's made a mistake. He's like taking a step back, and I'm thinking, man, I'm just trying to get right at these here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And uh, whoever it was, the centre half or whatever. And uh, no, I just thought, listen, I'm up the pitch. I haven't got much support. I thought just drive at them and see how far they go. But yeah. Listen, I think everybody looks back at that and thinks that comes a certain stage where he's got to come to me. He's got to come to me. <laughs> but, once, no, but once I got him by the edge of the box or close to the box, he didn't want to tackle me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, sort of bring you down. No, nah, after that was just, listen, slot it in. Very so easy. That ball, hit, that ball hits the net, then what? That ball <laughs> hits the net, then, then what is it? No. Nah, what, what's in your head then? That was, uh, I don't normally celebrate go uh, goals like that, but no, nah, it was special. But there was something the whole time, even when I was celebrating, I'm thinking, nah, this is too early, this is too early. <laughs> <laughs> I want that in like 70, 80 minutes where you're yeah. like, we can try and hold on now. Yeah. But uh, no, nah, it was good to score early. And then automatically I'm thinking in my head, right, let's go and try and get two here. Let's really like, because one's never enough, you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. You know, it was, it was never going to be enough for that game. And they were, when they have that much time, they're going to throw everything at us. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a good start, but I think it settled us a bit as well, you know? Yeah. And I showed how vulnerable they were, because defensively, let's be realistic, yeah, they true. were vulnerable, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, then, so then your your second goal? Uh, the second one? No, oh, just... Hendel's put in an unbelievable ball, to be fair. Two yeah. deliveries today were a joke. Yeah. Man, I just saw it the hell on the ground. I was just... Pottering about, I don't really go. <laughs> <with them>, you, <laughs> you know what I mean, man. I'm just in there trying to look at any bits and pieces I can like get my hands on and poke it away. But um, no, as soon as he's whipped that, I was, I think Tab was like maybe a yard off me. And as soon as he whipped that, I thought, mate, it's coming out. I didn't really have to move. Yeah. I've just I put them on the weights, obviously, haven't I? Just put the big arm <laughs> A bit, a bit like what I used to do to you in training. Yeah, good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely, I used to wait boiler anyway. Didn't yeah, I used to wait spoiler. Flipping up, my little rash. Yeah. No, that was, that was obviously a massive, massive. We were, we were under the, co we were under the cost massively. Yeah. That was left maybe 15 minutes or something. Yeah. But to get that, I genuinely really felt then we were going to win. Yeah, I don't know if my I don't know if my mentality does be different to other people around. Yeah, me yeah. Lot, but when we got that, I thought, mate, go for the juggler here. Let's do yeah. these and get at them. You know, because I thought they were gone. I thought every time we went forward, I was like, mate, we could have scored six that day. I probably yeah. should have scored four. Yeah. But I th I th that was probably my thinking that day. It was just every time I got it, I thought if we can get it up the pitch here, we'll get another chance. 
See, me watching from the outside, obviously, when you scored after a couple of minutes, as soon as you touched the ball at any stage in the game then, they were there was nothing but fear, yeah. obviously. It yeah. was just people backing off. No one wanted to come and press you. And that was it. I, I think I don't tap once or twice, and I think mentally it was like... I, I came in once, and I remember the second time I almost fainted to go to the line on him, and he's gone straight away, and I was like, mate, he, he was just, he, I don't know, he, just, he was in the size because he is a, he's a very, very good player, mate. Yeah, I yeah. Think he, you know what I mean? Mm. And he was, always, he was always one I used to look at at them and think, he deserves a better team around him because his delivery yeah. of that is frightening. Yeah. I was playing as a right winger. Yeah. But yeah, I think play was, it's like a striker. It's like me. You have some games where you might miss a sitter early on and you know for the rest of that game, mate, you're not scoring. There's yeah, nothing yeah. you can do. You can try and tell yourself and give all the positive talk and all, but everything you hit will just go wide or you'll save it or I'll hit the post. So. <laughs> it's just one of them days. So. To be fair to Rangers, I reckon they're watching your videos from like the three weeks before and be like, yeah, this guy's shot, he's got nothing left. And then suddenly, ah, I wrote them into the real Anthony Stokes stands up. Wrote them in, man, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. What, is this fast forward to, to head going to the day? That's I said this to you and the boys on the way to the game. I said, no one will remember Aloha away on a Wednesday night, mate, but they'll remember today. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true, mate. It's true. No one does remember you flipping honking anywhere else now. <laughs> no, to be fair. Well, that day's great goal. <laughs> oh, mate, what a goal. I remember saying in the, in the interview, I, I was so happy it was him that scored it. The winner, yeah, because I genuinely I think he deserved it. You know, Davey puts everything into it, and he, he's a great skipper. He was. He yeah. was good with everybody and he was fair with everybody and I just thought it was fitting, you know, that he scored the winner. Our, our captain scores the winner in the last minute. We've gone ahead yeah. and come back twice in the game and, and I just think, yeah, I just think it, I think it capped off because see if you were to like, if you were to write a, a, a book or a plan that day out how it could happen, score in the last yeah. minute, score early doors, I had everything, everything you really wanted and I think it was, it was a perfect. fit end with him scoring the goal so it was good. And I have a lot of time. Yeah, I look at the radio. I do. So, so, so then the final whistle goes. <laughs> to be fair, I probably would have been happier if I had to put one in the stands for a hat trick, and we would have. But maybe you would have Maybe you. Maybe you coming on a whistle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> but I find a whistle goes when runs on the pitch. Imagine, imagine you going down in hips history for hitting the twenty-five foot yarder into the stands. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of going down for smashing people and giving away fouls in the derby, man. Look at it uh, I've, seen, I've seen a little video on Instagram the other day getting into the box, mate. That's what I do, huh? Not like you, lad. I never got 10 yards away from the back four. never got 10 yards away the back four when I was there. I'd myself. Right, when the final whistle yeah. goes in the, in the cup final and everyone's on the pitch, what, what are your thoughts then? So I've seen the video you, what you, you just lost, you know. Ah, I was like, mate, all those plans I've made for the weekend are going to come true. If not, I'll be, <laughs> I was going into hibernation. <laughs> no, I can't, no, genuinely, I couldn't believe it. That's honestly the truth. See, even, I can't remember, so, someone's taking a goal kick or something and he's hit it short. And I'm thinking, mate, mm. put that into the crowd or out for a throw in here and slow it down. Yeah. And I was, I was... Probably like I don't really get nervous in games, but I was actually just nervous for the final whistle. And yeah. And when it goes, I, mean, I don't think it kicked in for two or three days. To be honest with you. Yeah. After you were drunk. Ah, well, two or three days after I signed up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, but, but everything though. See, even the open top bus and the the weekend, like the weather and um, Edinburgh that weekend, it was it was incredible. That it really was. Yeah, you could. I don't think you could have. I don't think you could have set the whole thing. Like, if you planned it out for the way the game went, the way the weekend went, I don't think you could do it if that was exactly what you wanted. So, yeah, the parade, the parade was crazy. Was crazy. Was crazy. <laughs> so, obviously, after the cup, cup final, when you, you, uh, the loan obviously ends and then it's, it's time to go down the road to Blackburn. You, start, you sign there. Yeah, um, went to Blackburn, mate. Uh, on was there, good fella. Um, Enjoyed it there, but it didn't really go that well for me, mate. I, I didn't settle down there. I wasn't happy for loads of reasons. And uh, I just wanted to back up the road, to be honest with you. Yeah. I just wanted away from there. 
Do you think it's hard, it's hard obviously, having a high of the cup final, going down as a, a legend at Hibs forever, you know, winning, winning the Scottish Cup? And it's like, where, where do I go from here kind of thing? And no disrespect to Blackburn, obviously, you've gone, you've gone down there, but unless you start on fire, you think, surely in the back of your mind, you're thinking, wow, like, you know, three, four months ago, I was doing this in the Scottish Cup final. Yeah. No, I actually started well there, scored yes. the first game, then scored second, then scored two goals as well. But mate, it was just, I don't know what it was, it was just something about that, I just didn't really settle down there. Yeah. I, I don't know what it was for, maybe for loads of reasons, but um, outside football and that had a lot going on, there, court cases and all that. And it was just a difficult time for me, that's honestly the yeah. truth. I had a lot going on in the background and that probably carried right through to even when I left there to going to Greece and that I yeah. went to Greece and that was just I thought I'd get a bit of sun on my back see it out for three three or four months here but everything that was going on the court cases and all was just it was just madness I couldn't concentrate on my football that was honestly the truth yeah so obviously yeah from Blackburn you then went back well came back to Hibs on a permanent and then and then obviously went out to Greece and like you said the, the coming back to Hibs for the second time how did you how, how did that feel for you how did that obviously coming on a permanent this time how was that for you um, that was good. It was exactly what I sort of wanted. You know what I mean? It was. Um, oh yeah, I'm skipping the gun there with Blackburn actually. But going back to Hibs, it was no, it was perfect, mate. It was exactly what I wanted at the time. And um, obviously Lenny was there, and I'd met him and had a good chat with him. And it was it was perfect. Exactly yeah. what I wanted. I love Edinburgh. I, lo I genuinely, I, lo I love I love Hibs. Everything about the club. You know, it was a great training ground. The stadium was good. Yeah. Great fan base. Yeah. Just, next to Celtic for me, it's easy, easy. Um, the best club for me, you know, in Scotland. Yeah. Because yeah. From my experiences of actually being there, playing for the club and the people at it, I've always loved my time there. No, of course. And then, like you said, then then the next step was obviously going out to Greece. And obviously, all I hear about you know players going out to Greece are horror stories, not getting paid this that. Oh, and that. Man. Then I saw you go there. Shambles went. I thought I'd get a son, a bit of sun on my back, and like I said, I'd had <clears throat> had a bit of a rough time with loads of stuff in the background. It was just a million things I'm coming together at the one time, and then I thought, yeah, it'd be good. I'll go out there, but same thing. Didn't get uh, didn't get paid in the end, and I just ended up leaving. Yeah, that was it. And my contract went down. I didn't even try and sue them. Nothing. Yeah, and then one time stayed, and that was it. What What was the actual football like out there? Like. For the, for the short slow time. Paced, slow paced, slow paced. Really? Was, yeah, it was a bit peculiar, mate. Like, even I think you could go from a corner coming out, playing a short corner to the edge of the box, and we'd end up with the ball back at our keeper. And the <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, listen, I don't mind the slow paced game, build it up and all that, but I'm like, from a corner back to the keeper. It was, uh, yeah. And, and and then obviously after that you go to Iran, so you're going from Greece to Iran. Yeah, I'm just checking out in a minute. But uh, yeah, yeah, that was a that was a big decision. Yeah, but, listen, my after money I got offered to go out there tax free. Yeah, but let's be realistic. That's the only real reason I was going out there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, and in the long term, it's actually worked out very well for me. I went and. Not only done a year out there, but the standard of football was very, very good. Mm. We had a hundred thousand uh, stadium, and we filled it most weeks. I, I, I think I, I'll be honest. When I went, I thought to be a farmer and two cows at these games. Yeah, yeah. Probably you'd have about maybe a hundred or two hundred people, but the the fan base is incredible over there. I, don't, I, I yeah. genuinely, if I'm being honest, I don't think the people have that much to do. So yeah, football, football is it really, isn't it? But John Trotsky managed it there. What's that? Who's your manager there? John Toshak? Uh, Toshak was there when I first came in, yeah. <laughs> so, no, it was interesting, but uh, he didn't really do much, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was just there for the dough as well. He used to just sit on the sidelines and just uh, give you a little wave and that. He'd stop Rich. it every now and then, do you know what I mean? Yeah. The boys couldn't even understand them. We all had interpreters, like the English speaking lads. Yeah. And uh, Harry Forrester was there when he came out. Oh, of he was, he was. He was there before me, actually, I think. Yeah. yeah he was there before me. Didn't he get put in the reserve straight away, though? 
What's that? Did he get put into the reserve team or second? Did the man own two teams? No, he had a problem with his knee or something. I don't know. Right. And then they said, listen, if they want Riddy out there, they'll just get Riddy, you know what I mean? Yeah. They'll pay you up or just tear up your contract. There's no, it's not like back home. But yeah. he, he, he had an injury and he was gone. I think it was only maybe there, two or three weeks. Wow. So what, what's the living like there? What were your living arrangements? In a hotel? Are you in a house? Or? Obviously, I, I've been in the round twice. Now, the last club, Paris Police, I went there for a couple of months before all this corona thing. But I only signed yeah. the treatment deal. So, um, but that debris was hard living, mate. It was hard really? living. I, mean, I was pretty much just in a hotel every day. I'd train with the team. I'd come back. I'd have lunch in the hotel. I'd uh, chill out in the afternoon, maybe sleep or something. And then I'd go into the gym in the evening and then I'd be back in the room. That was it. It was a prison sentence. It was basically like prison to an extent. So it's not safe for you to go out and about like someone to go to a local shop or... Yeah, there's, listen, there's shopping malls and all that. But if you go out, like the fanatics, you'll have people coming up asking for pictures constantly. And I used to go oh, out really? a bit. I just kept coming to bother. Too me? much. It's yeah. not like that. Um, listen, you go out in Edinburgh, people are Glasgow, people are last for pictures. But there, it's relentless. Yeah, it's just constant. Yeah. Yeah, so. so like you said, you signed a, a three-month deal, obviously back out there again, but that's obviously going to expire now with... Yeah, that's just going to expire, but... The last club, they tracked us as they didn't actually pay me my last payment. <laughs> no, so... so you just don't get... No, any no, 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 no I, like, I sued them and I won the case again. Yeah. Them, so I'm just get, waiting for that to get processed, but they've paid the price in the long term for the way they went about it, you know what I mean? So, yeah. So when you it's say they don't fun. pay you, so you're expecting your wages and then just nothing just comes in? Yeah, so they pay you. Then what? It's, mad. it's <laughs> madness how they pay you, mate. <laughs> 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 you get cash in airports and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> oh, oh, I won't say it on this. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Just, but it's, it's just not, it's not, it's not, it's not, not like at home. But it's, not, it's not like on the 24th of every month, 9 o'clock in the morning, the money goes in. That's... Yeah, they can pay yeah. anything, or, or they can just not pay. But I sued them for the remainder of my contract, and I won against them. Yeah. The, these people think that it's because it's normal out there, it's not like at home. And they're still on yeah. the FIFA route. So yeah, they have, to, they have to pay it eventually, so it is what yeah. it is. So what's the next step for you? Like you say, your contract's going to expire out there. What, what, yeah. Do you want to come back to Scotland? Is that back to the UK? Is that what your plan is? Um, yeah, definitely back to Scotland or the UK, 100%. Um, where I end up, I don't know. But um, no, I'll just wait and see when this payout comes in when I'm gone somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd love to, to be honest with you. I'd love to. I'd love to have another stint that is, but I think it's unlikely that it'll ever happen. But I'll definitely go back in. Um, I think it's quite likely I might play in Scotland at some stage. I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm definitely ending my career. I'm, told, I'm, only, I'm not even 32 yet. So yeah. I'm 31. The last few years, I've done the whole abroad thing and I've had enough of it. It's just, it's hard, hard work. Yeah. You know, so... Do you still have the hunger, Stokey, to do it? What's that? Do you still have the hunger to play? Do you still have the hunger oh, to go? hundred percent. Probably more so, more so now because yeah. I think mean, people are playing at home and I, yeah. I was back in the dressing room with, like, decent, decent banter and that. I've missed yeah, that one. Yeah. See, trying to speak, people think it's like, obviously going to training and that, that's like, yeah, you're, you're let off for a day where you can yeah. like go in and train and you sort of forget about everything else. But even there, it was hard for me because I'm speaking in broken English, I'm using interpreters, even yeah, there it was hard for me. I think <clears throat> even if I was in a country and I was like playing games and it was English speaking outside it, no matter where I was, if I'd known about yeah. it, it would be all right. But yeah. I found, just found the last couple of years there made difficult. I really, really did. So get down, get down on the Asher Surf at Livingston, mate. You enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> get down to the Surf <laughs> My knees might not hold up, but I do more stronger. <laughs> mate, mine are holding up, so you'll be fine. Oh, that's what I'm thinking. You must have them strapped up the bits. So man, listen. So, is there anything you want to touch on? Like, you've been amazing, mate. Honestly. No, that's it. Whatever you want to discuss, my I'm good. I'm going to get this. What's it? Get a Netflix on for the night. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good, mate. Honestly, you've been you've been absolutely amazing, like open and honest, mate. And that's the yeah. thing. I think it's good. You know, hopefully people will see this and see the the real side to you because I think there's a 
a lot of people who will judge you without knowing you kind of thing. And obviously, I'll share the dressing room with you. I stay in contact with you now as well. So it's, it's, it'll be mm. good that hopefully this gets out and people can see, you know, the real you. That's maybe my problem though, man. But people don't know me. You know, you know yourself. I don't really care what their opinion is. That's the yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know no, I don't come across. Listen, say, certain times I think everybody, I think if you're in the public eye, you're not going to come across well. But it's the way it is. The people oh, don't exactly. know you. That's all that really matters, you know what I mean? Exactly, bros. Keep, keep learning from your mistakes, son. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? So all you can do is learn from your mistakes.